first time I ever met you, mm -hmm. I was going through this. I got you. I was at, uh, learning classical guitar, taking uh, c classes at the Kent State College. Okay. Kent. And the Kent uh, um, George Bachman was the, uh, my professor's name, and he had me put clear coat okay. on my nails. And because I had to grow them out and like shape them with this really fine sandpaper, because okay. it's all finger style. Right, right, right. So absolutely. So they, they act like little picks. Wow. When you, you know, and some people put those like finger picks on. Like he made us grow them out and like shape them. And, wow, yeah. I like and, the concept though. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Woody James, oh, he, yeah. he uh, reinforced that with me when I started uh, going to Ohio Music Shop back. In the I day. miss him. He was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still rock one of his guitars. I do too, actually. Yeah. I have um, my uh, I have one of the acoustics and I have one of the electrics. Uh, Les Balls they have, and I have the one. I wish I had waited six months because I, the one I have is the. It, it's the one that has the bridge that's the wraparound kind. That goes, mm -hmm. So there isn't like a stop tailpiece like on a normal Les Paul. So I, every time I have to change a string, you have to take all of them off. Oh, that's you sucks. can't remove the bridge because it, it's also smashed up against the. Um, the O-rings that go around the pickups. So where the, 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 the bridge is on there, picture that like right up against the... Yeah. So in order to get a new string in, you literally have to take all the strings off. Yeah. And I and so I, I, I love the guitar. It sounds amazing. It's a beautiful sunburst. But I'm like... And then, and then six months later, they start doing stop tailpiece. I went, why didn't you start with that? <laughs> they heard your complaints. And yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> They call that excellent customer service now, but for the first batch, you're <laughs> SOL. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I still love those guitars. So they're, they're, I still play that that Woody acoustic. I play the thing there, like every day still. Those I had, tails are cool. That was my go-to acoustic once. It had this beautiful like floral mm -hmm. thing on the on the fretboard, and and then I have this black uh, Tele shape um, with two humbuckers in it. That's his, and that's like my third string guitar. That's awesome. And uh, but that acoustic I sold to his nephew a couple oh, okay. years after he died because he didn't ha he didn't have one of his instruments. Gotcha. So oh, that's, that's really gave cool. him like a really good price. That's awesome. It. it was nice to see him again too. Yeah. yeah. And now I'm a, a Martin guy on acoustic. Well, nothing wrong with Martin. That's yeah. a, that's a, that's that's <laughs> all good there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, for our listeners, we're talking about Woody James. Oh, yeah. Who had. Uh, he had a long musical career, right? But I, I met Absolutely. him late, late in life uh, when he had the Ohio Music Shop mm -hmm. in Kent. Yeah, it was an old bank, and he turned it into a guitar store that had repairs and a stage where he had open mics and bands come in, and even a, a wine and beer license and sold beer. Yeah, it was, was it was a cool big, place. Yeah, it awesome sounds place. like it. Yeah. I, it was a, and it I really had a practice room in the basement yes. that he leased me out. And that was, you know, as the, as one thing, it went under the street, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the way the, yeah. the uh, it was like a cavern underneath there, and it would go. You go down the steps, and there were like all these different little rooms, and it actually went under the actual like streets in the in in Kent. It was really really unique building, and just a neat uh, vibe in that whole place because it was also this really long curved um, uh, countertop. Where they would be either doing like sales there, or they would be like working on guitar over here. Mm -hmm. It was just, and they had a stage in there. It was just a really neat, chill yeah, they, place. They do their repairs right where you could see. Yeah, them. kind of like how Chipotle has their kitchen where you can see <laughs> them cooking up. Right. Like. <laughs> well, the workshop had a glass wall. It was it was all like encased, and they had a, a air filtration system in there, so you could be sawing and stuff like that. It would clean the room like seven times a minute. Oh, that's like that. cool. It was it was a really cool place. I was really sad when that place closed down. Describing they're, they're it, still, uh, I, I think I'd gone there for an audition with a Zeppelin tribute years ago in yeah. one of the one of the practice the, rooms. Yeah, in one of the practice rooms, and it never turned into anything. But uh. um, it's still being used for music, though. Oh, is uh, it? I haven't been up there. Yeah, Woody's, the other music yeah. store that's been in Kent forever. They expanded now. Like that, that big room is all their non-guitar, not non-rock stuff. So oh, it's I gotcha. like their keyboards and their brass instruments and woodwinds and they're oh, like working awesome. with all the um, the local school music programs right. and even in the surrounding areas in the county. Did they connect them so you could walk from one to the other or do you have to go outside? No, you, you have to okay. go you have to go outside. To, like, that'd be quite a feat if they could do that. <laughs> Make a tunnel right across that right. alley. <laughs> well, it's funny because Woodsy's had, um, if you go out the back, 
uh, of 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 where you know that music store was, there was this little like room over here. It was like it had like a, a metal grating across it in that sense, and it was a, it was where they, it was a storage room for Woodsies, and they had all these boxes mm-hmm. in there. But what was cool about it was they had a drum kit in there and a PA system, and so when we first started, when I had my band back then it was just under Joe Vitale Jr. I would we would rehearse there because most of the guys were in Kent. And we would just kind of, it was like a central location for us to all go. So we would rehearse there. There was no air conditioning. There was no heat. There was no bathroom. It was just, it was just a, a room full of boxes. And body. Like. And, and yeah. And, and, <laughs> and we, we were in there for a couple years in that sense. And then eventually there was another annex they had that was a, another facility that we moved to that had all, everything you could possibly need. But we used to rehearse in there and just random people would walk in to hear us playing. And this one night, and I can't remember her name, was this girl comes just walking in completely drunk in that sense and going, hey, where's the music? And we're like, we're in rehearsal right now. And, and then my friend was like showing her out and he comes back in like, Ugh. and we're like, what? He, she goes, she licked me. And then like, <laughs> and he's like, never clean, never clean. And it was just, it was just random stuff like that. But it was a cool place. We were right around the corner from, um, a sub place, so we'd walk up there and get like food and that. But it was, it was, it was Franklin a... Street Deli, right? Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> best subs in Southern County, Portage County. Portage. Absolutely, but it was, it was an interesting time period up there, though. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you. I ran into that a couple of times, late night rehearsals. But you're, you're essentially right where all the Kent bars are. Oh yeah, in the co- like right by the college, and yeah. so it af- either afterwards you're. Like getting drunk, or like you're taking a break and go getting a drink, and right? And like, oh, you come back with a few friends, like, okay, we're getting nothing done tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I've had those. We we would have on average about four hour rehearsals back then. But when we actually, I forgot this one too. When we very first started, one of our, my original drummer, he had uh, he was still going to Akron University, so we would rehearse in the in the uh, band room. At like midnight, uh, and for like two or three hours. So we'd be like, be like midnight to three in the morning. We'd be in, in downtown Akron that, in that sense rehearsing. And I'm like, why did we do that? It was, it was just like the most uncomfortable time to rehearse. And that's, I mean, I'm a night owl, so I'm always awake. But everyone else had to drive up there. It was, it was, it was a weird start that. But then that when we moved up, then the camp, then we just didn't have air conditioning. At that point. <laughs> Well, what do you say we get the podcast started? Yeah, sure. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. We have been recording all that, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, always. I figured this <laughs> out. Right. <laughs> Anywhere I go into, I yeah. always prepare for like, okay, they're probably recording right when you walk yeah. in, so mm-hmm. <laughs> say nothing, Salacia. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> We've got the whole Nixon set up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Welcome back to Cuyahoga Sound Podcast. Episode like forty three already. Huh? Yeah, I think we're forty three. Yeah, we still haven't hit that year yet, but we are on season two. Yeah, coming up on a year. I'm excited for all the guests we have lined up, and especially right now, we're sitting down with Joe Vitale Jr. Hey guys, how's it going? going it's going well, great. Man. Going awesome. Man. Cool. Thank you for having me tonight. You're welcome. Yeah, man. absolutely. Yeah. Chuck, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Cool. Uh, had to work long today, so that that kind of sucked. But mm-hmm. you know. growing a mustache. Yeah, yeah. I went with the sideburns to go with it. It was just you know fucking around in the mirror. Yeah. And nice. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna leave this for a it's bit. A new look. I like it. Yeah. I got a Rickenbacker. I thought a mustache <laughs> should go with it. it similar shapes in yeah. different places. Now, yeah. what you could do though is you could shave like the goatee section out and just leave the mustache going into the chest. Go, yeah. And just, you have like the 1800s look going. Yeah. Do you still have the base? You go, go Lemmy. I still have it. So we can let's do a side by. <laughs> I mean, it might be perfect. <laughs> All right. And, um, cool. How about you? You had your first old man moment? Or was uh, it your first? I did. Well, this was my a first real one where, like, I, I, was, I was sad, but then I was happy because I actually was doing the right thing for my mind and soul and body, you know. Um, but we, we went to that Black Keys show on Friday, brought the five-year-old, her first concert, and she had the time of her life you know i we're on the blossom lawn i thought she was gonna get too tired or like bored or something but she was dancing and rocking out the whole time that's cool that's awesome yeah yeah, yeah. fell asleep on the drive home of course but <laughs> yeah. you know and she know so, all their music uh like going into it she a fan was she a fan she was singing a couple of the songs yeah. okay cool yeah. um very cool then but yesterday was gonna rock even harder to front row at uh gary clark jr front row huh? that was gonna be my plan yeah <laughs> at Northfield uh, Casino right over here and um, 
had to work, I sh- if I took the day off, maybe it could have happened, but I worked during the day and then came home and I said to Rihanna, like, how you, how you feeling? She's like, I'm, I'm good. Good to go. You know? <laughs> You're waiting for that reinforcement of like, <laughs> oh, I'm kind of tired. You're like, yeah, me too. <laughs> well, she, she said something about being a little tired and I'm like, yeah, me too. I'm like really leaning towards staying home tonight. I'm going to take a shower. After I got out of the shower, I'm like, let's stay home. I'm like, <laughs> it's going to be a long night and uh, we're still not recovered from Friday and we want to do some fun things this weekend and so now we're officially hosted by two old men. That's right. <laughs> oh, no, wait, 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 hold on. I had a very similar, well, I had a, a thing the other night. We did a show up at Lock 3. My band was, uh, Ravenwood was up there. And I've been noticing over the past couple years that my vision has just been getting odd. And I'm like, I'm sitting there like, everything looks double across the way. So I had ordered this pair of like online, I have a, I got a, I went to see my eye doctor and then I, I got a pair of prescription glasses, but I got them like from online. So I got them like from like Zenny, one of those things. They came, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can see. So I'm sitting there at my show the other night. I'm like, okay, I can either not be able to read stuff that I need to be able to look at during the show, or I'm going to have to break down and wear glasses during the show. Because usually I have sunglasses on when I'm playing, and I didn't opt for the sunglass option when I got it. So I'm like, well, we're having this now. So I'm like, I'm looking there going like, I'm like, oh, this is... This is a very odd look for me. <laughs> yeah, but, no, but, but I, you I could couldn't see. Uh, yeah, yeah, I couldn't. I before that, I'm like, I'm going. I can't read anything off without those things. I was like, <laughs> how have I been driving for the past couple of years? The contacts in your future. Yeah, I've tried those. I I just every time I try to touch the, like my eye to do that, I'm always like, God. So it's it's. I I, I hope to do that eventually. I don't mind wearing glasses, um, but it's one of those things where I'm like. I'm like, okay, it's getting closer, it's getting closer. <laughs> I'm like, so every time it gets near, I just I, I just start blinking like crazy. I can never get the thing in. Mm-hmm. So they tried showing me years ago how to do it, and I just couldn't do it. I had a buddy that was uh, legally blind, and in Germany they came up with a way to fix it. Um, he had, like, it was all iris, or all pupil, no iris, so he couldn't okay. adjust the amount of light. And they came up with this mechanical iris. But I remember my one buddy made the, the perfect joke once he was able to see everything. It made right. me think about what you're saying, like, oh, I can see now. Is Wouldn't it be hilarious if Tommy's wife was hideous? But <laughs> <laughs> for, Fortunately for Tommy, you know, he's, he's got a, a good-looking well, wife. But, <laughs> but, yeah, first thing, he gets, gets his eyes working for the first time, can finally see it, and it's just like, fuck. <laughs> I, was, I was walking around my house. I'm going like. I'm putting them on and off, I'm like, oh, okay, that's clear, that's not, that's clear, that's... And it was just, it was ridiculous, and I, my wife is there, and I'm going, I'm like, honey, I can, I can see everything! I'm like, I can count the blades of grass in the yard, it's amazing. <laughs> you counted all the blades of grass? Well, no, no, but, <laughs> but, but, but I could if Get I wanted. some time. <laughs> it, would, it would have taken a while. But... Yeah. Cool. All right, Joe. But I'm OCD enough to do that. Yeah. So. <laughs> not a busy man. <laughs> <All right. laughs> gotcha. <laughs> You'll have that. All right, man. Um, so you are singer, songwriter, band leader. Do some music production too. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wear many hats. <laughs> All the boxes are checked there. <laughs> Pretty much. So then you also can check off like. Booking agent, road manager, it's like... Yeah, it's all like the all miserable the, ones. Yeah, all the, all the <laughs> accountant, all the, all the fun stuff they have to do there with that. Gear review. So yeah. what do you have on the list that's like one that you won't touch that you're like, I'm always hiring that out? Uh, well, t- uh, the one thing I, I, I try to hire out actually is um, a couple years ago I started using a guitar tech when we were doing a show. And, and it really sped things up, kept things much more, you know, solidified and together because I hate downtime between songs. And so one of the things I was doing initially is I was running these kind of synth synth, uh, interludes that I would run to kind of keep something moving. It's still stuff we're doing, but it's just to break up the down, no audio. And I can only, I can talk to an audience while tuning, but I'm always thinking like, I tuning, tuning, talking, tuning. And I'm always like, what what the heck am I saying while I'm doing that? So I started using a guitar tech, and it's one of those things where when I don't have one now, I'm like, oh man, this really sucks. And so like the other, I'm like going, I have to tune my own guitars? Oh my gosh, the humanity. (laughs) And so it's, there's really, there's a lot, I've had to do every single job literally that you do. So it's one of those things where it's not really one that I would say I, I won't touch in the sense it's just, it's just ones I don't like doing in that yeah. sense. It's it's because I'm always the first there and the last to leave. So it's like, I'm kind of used to it. But uh, 
I don't know, maybe catering. We'll go with catering. Be <laughs> <All right. laughs> Guitar right. tech would be nice, though. Like, I, I, it I helps. Agree on that, that downtime in between songs always sucks, it, it, and it feels. It feels so long when you're up there. You know? It really does. And, the, and the th especially with our show, I use a lot of weird alternate tunings, and I do a lot of stuff where, especially now, I'm doing more stuff with acoustic and electric. So when you're outside, and if it's Ohio, and it's humid, your guitar is going to just go, I quit. And so I've had several shows where it just it starts off in tune, and by the end of the song, it's like, it's just, it's like, it's like literally you go in a store and you pick up a guitar on the wall and it's like, and just nothing is in tune on it. It's just, I've had nights where at those points I just stopped playing. It <laughs> but it, it's, uh, it, it does help dramatically. Um, uh, it's, it's wonderful when we've had it. I, I obviously can make it through without it, but it's one of those situations like, I don't want to do a show now without that. Yeah. <laughs> that remind, just reminded me of a Gary Clark Jr. thing. The guy I just missed. One of his most famous uh, videos. He's playing one of his songs uh, for Big Crow at some festival, and um, he starts in with like the second half of the song, and like you can hear one like G or the B string is out of tune, and so he he the song keeps going, and he like, keeps singing, and just like um, tunes it like while the song's going, and Done he's that. singing, not even like missing a step, and like then. I had a, a capo one time that was muting the one string I needed, and I oh, I was in like I was in only a, like about maybe a few measures. I went, hold on. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I normally don't do this, but I'm like, <laughs> and I just moved the thing because I'm like, let's try that again yeah. because it's like there's a point where I'm like, there's no way I can get around this because I, I sat there going like I could move it, but then I got it. I'm kind of it's one of those things where I was solo acoustic mm -hmm. where. I couldn't really stop to actually move it. So I'm like, you know, we're just in like the to... first 20 seconds of the song. Yeah. 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 yeah it's it's like, like, you can start it up. Yeah. It's sure. worth It gives the audience like a real moment. Too right. With, yeah. Let's oh, try that. And that that's again. the thing, you know, I try, that, that's the other thing too, is I try to just be authentic with an audience. It's like, if you know, it's, you're up there, you're talking to the audience. And I like, you know, I've done, I've done large scale gigs. I've done very small gigs. I, what I love about small gigs is you can actually sit there and talk to the people while you're playing and yeah. stuff. And those are a lot of fun. There was, um, I don't know if it's still called this. It was called the Winchester up in, um, I think it's in... It Lakewood. It? Lakewood, yeah. yeah. And I did a show up there. It was just like, just a real... Just real t it was before they changed it over where the stage is now on the one wall and it faces the... Where it used to be like, you had the seats over here and then there was like a like a railing or something. You had mm -hmm. seats. Yeah. So it was still in the back room. Yeah, it was. Yeah, And, and it, was, it was a fun thing, but I could sit there and actually just chat with the audience while I'm mm -hmm. playing. Those are, those are really fun shows. But then I also like... You know, the other side of it too, when you can just sit there and you just see a sea of people, which is also a lot of fun as well. But. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's unlike any energy. Like unless you've done it, you don't. You right. Don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you guys see the um, the Woodstock '99 uh, documentary that's on Netflix? I've right just now? seen some clips yeah. on I it. I haven't watched seen it. The whole Watch thing. it. It is <laughs> fascinating. It's three episodes it, each day. It's, this is a three-day mm -hmm. festival. It is. Fascinating to watch that. I remember, like, I was think I was fourteen, fifteen at the time, so I was like watching it on MTV, yeah. or, like clips and like how it was going, and then like all the reviews of it after on Zanga or MySpace or right. whatever, whatever it was then. Yeah, like, right. when, he, when my fifty six K modem decided to right. work. <laughs> Yeah, I was but 18 yeah, I remember when that crazy, went on, man. crazy videos. Like, and uh, I think my mom saw it and said, "I'll never be able to go to a concert like that, <laughs> as long as you live under this roof." No, it's, I, I remember because I, I didn't, I wasn't at, but I heard about it at the time. Because I remember the ninety, I think it was ninety four or ninety five. They had one. It was yeah, ninety four was the twenty fifth anniversary. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. And then they had the one in ninety nine, and they basically, you know, so much they've said they'll never be in our Woodstock after this one because of just it. it literally, the last day they show, they're kind of driving through the remains of the festival after it was like burned down. Yeah, sense. and it looked like a war zone. I mean, it was. I sat there watching this. I, I went to my wife. Um, I'm like, I because I watched this whole documentary. I'm like. Honey, you have to see this. Because my, my wife is a um, radio DJ. She's on uh, 97.5, Kathy Vogel. And so she's familiar with a lot of all this, you know, throughout her career. She's seen a lot of this sort of stuff. And I said, you have to sit and watch this. <laughs> it was fascinating to watch that. Yeah, because they got everybody riled up. That was at an Air mm -hmm. Force base, right? And yes. then they kept promising this very special ending. Yes, yes. And the very special ending was, we're going to give everybody fire. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was watching. This. They're okay. They're 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 going. Okay, we're gonna hand out a hundred thousand candles. And I, I remember I was working. I was editing on on the, this new record I'm working on. I'm, I was editing it. and I'm going. I heard that because I had it on the background. I, w I just turned my head. I went, 
that is not a good idea. <laughs> and at first, it looked really cool. They showed the audience, and here's all these like all these lights everywhere. It's like cool. And then about there's you see this glow in the background, and there's like a bonfire started, and then it just another one appeared, and another one, and another one, and it just turned into like just literally like a war zone. Yeah. Oh, and then Limp Biscuit went on playing break stuff. And, yeah. Yeah. That was another one I went <laughs> again. Not a good idea. <laughs> like, great band. I, yeah, I was like, a of... not a good moment to do that. Well, the, the best part of that too was when they had, were putting the fire out, is uh, or they're putting the candles to everyone. It was uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers were on stage at the time. Yeah. And they did the song. They did Jimi Hendrix "Fire," and I'm like, oh come on. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, what did you expect was going to happen after that? I remember watching that like stream because I had just graduated from high school, and I was like, "Yeah, that, that seems like my generation just lighting everything on fire." <laughs> that seems about right. <laughs> I love the angsty nineties. Yeah, that was, was a good part about it. Was, yeah. Did anybody die? Any casualties? I from don't that? think anyone did. I, I think people got people got hurt. Yeah. And some other stuff, but no one died. I, I don't think there were any actual casualties. Thank goodness. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm surprised when they decide to ride down the one F array speaker tower and it's like the whole like thing of it just falling over and it's like multi stories oh, no. high. They got <laughs> they climb like it's like three or four stories high. And it has a big X on the bottom of it for support. And so they're calling up all the scaffolding for this thing and just rode it down. And I'm going and it crashed with an insane impact. And I'm going, how did nobody die at this thing? It's just it's like wow. I said, it's it's worth watching because you're like, I cannot believe this. It started off great. The thing, the first day was wonderful, and then it just deteriorated <laughs> as, as the weekend went on. Yeah. All right, we've got our Netflix recommendation. Well, we sure yes. will, yeah. All right. <laughs> Fire Fest is another good one to watch. Too. I watched that one. I watched that I've heard one. About yeah. that one. <laughs> wow, big change from Woodstock in 30 years. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> It's almost been 30 years since then already. I can't believe that. I know. That's yeah, 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 yeah. 25 years. Yeah, it's amazing how fast. Everything between uh, the mid-90s to now is, like, compressed. It feels like, that was in the 90s? I'm like, it just seems like it doesn't seem like it's that yeah. long ago. And it's been 2020 for three years now. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> wow. All right, cool. I'll be watching that over the next few days. Yeah, Absolutely. Why don't you tell uh, tell everyone about the bands you're in, about okay. how long you've been active, like what? Well, I started. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, I <laughs> we'll started. Let's we'll start with that. Okay. <laughs> I, I started um, back in right around 2001. I decided. I okay. Let me let me actually backtrack a little bit. In the late 90s, I was going to Mount Union University. It was Mount Union College back then, and I had this opportunity to go on tour playing percussion with Stephen Stills Blues Band. And now I will be all transparent. I did get that through because of my dad playing with them. But they needed a percussion sense, and I had played with Stephen on a couple things. So they said, do you want to come out on, on tour and play? I said, college, go out on tour, do the thing I actually am trying to do. I'm like, okay, this wins. So I, I left Mount and went on to... Uh, play on a tour with Stephen Stills, which then led into playing with Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And then um, after that, um, I decided that, you know, I kind of, as much as I enjoyed being a side guy in these projects, I also was, I started writing music around 92. Uh, my parents had got me one of those little Tascam Porta studio things, yeah. and I started learning how to <laughs> record things. And back then, I was actually doing a lot of, like, Caribbean music, which I don't know how I went from that to, like, industrial, but um, there was this little disconnect somewhere in there but uh, I, I started I went you know I want to try to do this as an artist and so um, I had an opportunity to start recording a record so I, I, I thought you know what I'm going to focus on this so I started writing this record and it kind of mutated over the years uh, that I was working on it and then about four years into recording because I was just you know I was kind of learning this as I went I suddenly had an opportunity to get a little bit better gear. And so I literally went back through and re-recorded it, which took another four years. So eight years into my first album in that sense, which was called Dancing With Shadows. It came out great, it really came out sounding wonderful, but it was like, I'm sort of like, I'm never doing that again with, with <laughs> that long of a period of, of time of recording. It takes me now maybe, if I'm doing a full LP, it takes me maybe about a year if I'm really focused in on, with life, and then you gotta work on that. So. 
from there then, I, as I was recording that, I was doing some solo gigs, doing some you know, acoustic uh, solo shows. And then that released album in December of 2008. And then I, by 2011 is when I started actually, I thought, you know, I'm going to actually put a band together to get this thing out there. And so I put a lot of the, some of the guys I play with now are still the same guys I played with back then. And so we started doing uh, any show we could, you know, grab at that point. So you're you're doing shows. You're like, okay, you drive two hours. Oh, there's no money. Great. Uh, we literally got to a gig in Columbus. We drove all the way down there, played a two-hour show, and they said, oh, the headliner's supposed to pay you. I went, oh. All right. So I went and talked to them and said, oh, we'll send it in the mail. I'm like, sure you will. Sure. <laughs> and so I talked to my, I, I gave my guys, I was able to, I gave them like gas money because I wanted to give them something because I felt horrible. But we did a, we did a whole mess of those kind of shows. These mixtures of things. Then, then things started picking up a little bit. We were doing... Some, this is under your name? Yeah, this is under, under, um, under my name. And around 2015, I had had this sub-project that was this idea in my head for years called Ravenwood. And the reason that materialized is there was a guy that I was working with that was wanting to manage me, and he wanted me to change my name at the time, only because with my dad being Joe Vitale and I'm Joe Vitale Jr., the names were so similar... And people were confusing us a lot. They still do confuse us. Like online, they'll be like, oh, I saw you in Kent back in the city. I'm like, do I look 74 years old? <laughs> and so I, it, um, so there's it's a, it's a weird um, kind of a mix there. So but I, so I went, okay. So I spent a week. I was out in Los Angeles. And I was staying in this, this guy's house out there. And every night, I, I'm like, okay, what, do I, what, what am I going to call myself? I never thought about this, you know, as a premise. So I sat there. This is back in 2010. And I went. All right. So I was thinking, all right, strength, and I want I wanted images of like strength and power in that sense because my message has always been uh, triumph over uh, adversity. So I came up with birds of prey, and then like wood, and that's so in the sense of like just things that in, indicate strength. You have like redwoods mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So then I went, I love raven. So I went, all right, raven wood, and that's literally how that assembled. Now the irony of that is you fast forward about. A couple years, uh, and I just started discovering how this name had been following me around. I never realized it. Um, I grew up on a street a few blocks over from a street called Ravenwood. We rehearsed, when we first started rehearsing at my buddy's apartment, uh, we were doing guitar rehearsals, it was Ravenwood Apartments. The um, my One of the characters in my favorite, my favorite movie is Indiana jo uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And you have Abner Ravenwood. So th this name kept like reappearing throughout my life. And it, all of a sudden I realized that it materialized. But I didn't do anything with it for about seven years after that. So I had this band. I, I, I created like a MySpace page for it, but never did anything with it. And then around 2015, I decided to change gears radically. And I started working on a couple new things. I went, you know, I'm, the, the music I'm doing is heavy enough. It wasn't matching the name. I mean, Joe Vitale Jr. and Industrial doesn't quite say the same thing. It's not like nine inch nails. It has yeah. like a, a you know, connotation to it. So I was like, all right, we need to change it. So I decided at that point to shift over to a band name and then spent there a couple years going like, first it was like Joe Vitale Jr. and Ravenwood. So there'd be that connection to the name because also we have this new name that nobody has any idea who we yeah. are. So from that point then, then about 2018, 2017, I just switched it completely just to Ravenwood. And that's literally where I'm at now with that. That's on the personal side of projects. Um, I started playing with uh, Donnie Iris um, on drums about about a year ago. Uh, I'm the backup drummer when Kevin Valentine's their primary guy. And that's, okay. you know, that's his primary gig. But he also works on Netflix. So he... When he does, he so he's out in Los Angeles a lot. So when he doesn't fly in for shows, if they're like whatever size they are, they'll call me up and say, "Hey, can you come over here and do this?" I'm like, "Yeah, absolutely." So I started playing with them in like July of last year. So I've been playing with them, and then uh, and that's been fun. They're a really wonderful group of guys. Um, they just did the the uh, the Legends concert down in Canton for the Hall of Fame week. Okay, and they play at the stadium down there, and and I was supposed to play that gig originally, and and because Kevin was gonna be wasn't gonna be able to make it. And then, like a week and a half later, before it, he was able to go. I'm like, no, no, no mind you, I'm not trying to take his gig. That's his gig. I, I and, and he he's a fantastic drummer, really nice. I love. Yeah. I've I've done a couple shows with him. And he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. But like that particular show, I'm like, it's my hometown. I just yeah. want to play. But no, it, it was it, it was fine. It was. But they did it. They did an awesome job there, and they just played out at Star Lake uh, this past week, which was really cool. And so there's been that, and then I'm involved with this new project that's. Um, we have a show coming up in October. It's called The Vinyl Machine. 
And what this is, we're going to be playing at the uh, the night stage in Akron. It's right next door to the Akron Civic Theater, and it's um, it's a group of musicians that w the, the show that we're doing is all the songs you're hearing are the actual musicians who played on it. So you have the guitar player, for example, from The Heaters, who played The Heat Is On. You have Peter Frampton's bass player. You've got my dad, who's played on with you know Walsh, Eagles, Carpenter's yeah. Nash. Uh, then you have uh, Jim Stapley. He he's been with he's been with Cactus, uh, a couple other guys that like also oh, um, he's done some stuff with uh, Ron Wood and some other things. So it's really a, an amazing group of musicians. So the music you're hearing is actually not, not the main artist, but you're hearing the musicians who actually played on those songs. So we're doing our, our debut show. Um, everyone's coming up because we're kind of spread around the country. So we're all coming up to uh, to Akron in October to do our first show up there. It, it's going to be a fun night. That sounds it's, like it. Yeah, that sounds really it's a, cool. It's a neat grouping of music. It's because it's like you'll have songs from the Eagles, Joe Walsh, Crosby, Stills and Nash, Peter Frampton, Gary Wright. I mean, it, yeah. it's a it's a weird, interesting mix of songs. Right. Cool. What day is that? October. Octo it's Wednesday, October nineteenth. At right. uh, eight p.m. out there, and then the tickets are going fast. It's like people seem real excited about it, so we're real. It's real pumped about it. It's a cool room that out there. It does sound like a lot of yeah. fun, yeah. I haven't listened to... You brought up Cactus. I haven't listened to Cactus yeah. in forever. Right? They, were just, they just played up at uh, Kent Stage back in, like, I think it was, like, February. Really? I went up to see my friend, uh, my the singer for our group, uh, sings with them, and he was there. He goes, hey, you want to come up to the show? I said, sure. So I drove up to t Kent to watch. It was in the middle of a snowstorm. Yeah. I'm driving wow. through. I'm going... This is how much I care about my friend. <laughs> but no, it was, they did a great job. It was Pat Travers open for them that night. Oh, wow. And I, we, we actually opened for Pat Travers years ago. But it was actually, get this, this is actually kind of an interesting night. It was out in this um, flatbed truck, and Red Sun Rising played before us, is right before they got signed. I mean, literally like two months before they were signed uh, to Razor and Tie. And so, and I know all those guys. We've kind of we've done some shows together. Wonderful, uh, Mike Protich and I. We talk on face or on um, Instagram all the time. But um, they played, we played, then Pat Travers. So it was like it was kind of a seeing everybody. You know, obviously not Red Sun Rising wasn't there at, at the Kent show, but it was like just kind of a reunion for a bunch of us, and that it was a fun night. Wow, that's cool, man. I wish I'd have heard about that one. Yeah, that that's one. the uh, the problem with listening to satellite radio is I miss like oh, I announcements of all the. <laughs> All the local stuff. I'm with you. I under I, that is the one thing that you do. Like, it's like, oh, when did that come through? It's like, yeah. <laughs> is Red Sun Rising still making music? They they're on like a high uh, like a kind of indefinite hiatus. I I don't. They, they never said what happened in that sense, but they are just kind of like they've kind of gone. I think it was you know actually I have no idea. So they've kind of done their own thing. I know Prodich is now uh, lead singer ahead of uh, the Violent is their his new band and then. Um, Monarch, or something. Brian's doing something called the Monarch. Yes, or? yeah, it's it's yeah, and he's doing that. I have I haven't talked to him in a little bit. I, we we talk every now and then, but I haven't talked to him in probably a couple months. But yeah, he's doing that. They just played up at Musica, I believe, was their like one of their first shows. They did. They're doing great. Oh, nice. And then I um, I was about I'm, to ask if they're like back in Ohio. Yeah, I, I believe Ryan is. I think he's back here. I, Protus is down in Florida. I think now is where he, is. he sends. He'll put posts up every now and then of him like with a palm tree in the background. I'm like I'm like that is so not fair. He does it like in the middle. <laughs> winner too it's yeah. like, so we got to wear them on our shirts to oh yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and we're as as we're quickly approaching that season i'm always like uh, oh, yeah. I, I love fall it's here comes favorite. the six weeks of fall yeah right. yeah. Yeah, yeah i, I, love, I love fall, fall. it's yeah. my favorite time here winter i i've always said it can go you know it, it, i like snow for christmas and then mm -hmm. january 2nd can go back to 85 absolutely <laughs> Yeah, I used to plow out in Menor, so oh, yeah, I oh gosh, it, <laughs> that's that's where I'm living now. Oh, yeah, and gosh. I grew up in Chardon, which is okay. even, yeah, worse. even worse. No, yeah. I, I know where right <laughs> that. I used to go up to um, uh, Menor on the beach up there. Uh, that long one that the, with the lighthouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's and, right where I'm living. It's, oh, okay. Yeah. You've been up to Pickle Bills. Yeah, yeah. I love that place. <laughs> <laughs> that dock keeps floating away every winter. The ice comes oh. through and it <laughs> takes the floating bar away, and people bring it back. Does it still have that? Like it looks like almost um, like a carousel. That round. Uh, yeah, it, it, and it floats out like the ice breaks and sends it out like every winter, and people tow it back. <laughs> so yeah, you might like come out there and find the bar. Oh, that's funny. While they're out boating. The last couple of years, my fall has been extended a little bit because uh, Rihanna is from West Virginia, oh. my girlfriend. So we'd go down there and a lot more trees, a lot more changing of leaves later into um, like November. And, oh, okay. Uh, and the snow doesn't come there until like January. Oh, gotcha. 
Then, then though, <laughs> then as the lake effect comes in, then you get all the snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I might appreciate this winter because you might, yeah, because yeah, I don't have one for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Why? We're, what's going on? <laughs> moving, <laughs> going to Rome. So, oh, so, nice. Yeah, that'll be. Yeah. I get to drive. I'm gonna have to have the Rome bell now instead of the Kent bell. <laughs> yeah, that works. We're gonna get a whole yeah. bunch of bells and you know, yeah. got about. 20 episodes left with Chuck. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, is in Rome, Italy? Is yeah, it? yeah. Rome, oh, that's Italy. awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, Rome, Ohio, nothing special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sure I, mean, I, I kind of know. figured, I guess I was, um, with coming into the show, I was, I was listening to the Ohio Weather Band show, and I, I thought I heard that you mentioned about that, that you were going to be going out there. So yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yes. mm -hmm. That's going to be crazy. We're actually going in November and uh, scoping out our right. apartment to make sure it's like, all everything they said it is because nice. you know so now if you want snow you can just drive to it or like go to switzerland right? yeah or absolutely Get i will absolutely be going to the to check out switzerland in the winter my dad was with csn and they were doing a european tour back in 2008 i think it was the, the 08 yeah it was either 07 or 08 but anyway they were over there and and like they got off the plane they're walking out there and the, the crew guys were some of the bands were like where are all the italian restaurants dad looked at them and goes they're called restaurants here. They're just <laughs> called the restaurants. But he said, uh, there's, like, there's not like an Italian place here. It's like, um, it's like you're going to find like a Fazoli's or something. But uh, no, he said, though, the food there is, he goes, the produce is unlike anything you've ever had. He goes, he had some cantaloupe and some honey jumel. He's like, it's the best you'll ever have in the world. Yeah. The, the, the ground there is just perfect. For yeah, I, I don't like tomatoes here. Like, I've never liked tomatoes. Same here. Over there, like, I'll eat them like candy. That's awesome. It's really weird. <laughs> and that probably the same thing with me. I've, I, my wife and I have this discussion all the time. I love everything yielded from the tomato. Oh, yeah. And being Italian, that's kind of built in. But I like I cannot bite into those. I had a, I had a friend from college. Uh, she's one of my best friends from then. And she would just get there like like an apple and just bite into the thing. I'm like, how are you doing that? <laughs> yeah, that's these it. ones taste quite a bit different. They're almost like candy. Oh, that's it's, awesome. That's yeah, very weird. But my mom good. grew a bunch of tomatoes growing up, and so I ate, ate a bunch of those raw. And then realized that they don't taste very good, but there's this seasoning called spike. You ever heard of that? This mm -hmm. seasoning mm -hmm. called spike. You can just sprinkle that right on raw tomatoes, and it, it changes them huh. completely into something edible and delicious. <laughs> <laughs> you do it, it turns into a burger. It's like <laughs> spike with the extra MSG. <laughs> I don't know what's all in it, actually. Yeah, I never looked at the ingredients, yeah. but... It's delicious. That it awesome. sounds like something you would have, like, seeing on a lawsuit commercial now. <laughs> like, like, have you had Spike? <laughs> <laughs> Call now. It's like, it's like, you pay nothing unless yeah. you re uh, unless you receive a substantial cash a a reward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cuyahoga Sound Podcast brought to you by Spike Season on <laughs> Tomatoes. And the attorney's working against them. <laughs> <laughs> We're also brought to you by Basement Trader. Yes, we are. .com. B A S S M E N T. <laughs> Trader.com. Mr. Chuck Kaminsky out of Painesville on Chestnut Street. Yeah, absolutely. I might go check out. He's got an old, like, 75P base right now that's been modified, and it's got, like, a bridge pickup added to it. I'm like, I did not I'm... see that. He posted it? Yeah, it's posted up there. It's been up there for a bit. Um, it's a natural finish with a uh, maple neck, and I might go check it out because I like P bases, but I wish I had a bridge pickup. So. Yeah. Go see Chuck. I'll Go see I'll, Chuck. Maybe yeah. I'll see you there. <laughs> BasementTrader.com. You can uh, email BasementTrader at Yahoo.com. You can check out his two Reverb stores, Reverb.com slash shop slash BasementTrader. Yeah. <laughs> and he'll also do an amazing job with your setups. Yeah, quick Repairs. turnaround. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. got a, a line of guitars, Nashville Guitar Works. Yeah. yeah. Fender quality guitar for under $300, brand new. And uh, text only 4403294468 to set up an appointment there or you go. email. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Joe, you were speaking about like first there, last to leave. Oh yeah. Yeah, just like our buddies over at Enlightenment <laughs> Event Lighting. <laughs> Check out earlier this season for our conversation with Brian and Emily at uh, the life of a stage lighter. And uh, enlightenment, enlightenment event lighting at gmail.com. You need any lighting. I'm loving your transition. I was just going to say, that was the smoothest transition between that. That was excellent. I'm waiting for like a dirty one to come in now. Well, this one is. Just buy this. <laughs> You want to talk about oh, listen the old CLE? school one? Yeah. We got listen CLE. 
they've got the mood based playlist, mm-hmm. not podcast. I got it right this time. You did. Yeah. Uh, so they one use, out of ten. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one out of forty three. <laughs> they've uh, yeah they got their mood based playlist. So instead of doing it by genre, it's by mood. And the moods are what is love, groove, energy boost, chill, feel good, misery loves company, rock out, night driving, and acoustic cuts. What do these playlists have to do with Cleveland? Uh, they're all Cleveland artists, and they've also been getting these um, played at local like vendors, trying to get them to play local artists in their shops. That's um, awesome. <laughs> yeah, you play play these playlists during the the week. You know, whatever you listen to on Spotify, you listen to new music. This is all new music. All new music. And if you listen to what was it like ten hours or so of of it during the week, that's twenty five dollars you're putting into the pockets of Cleveland artists. Yeah. And they also have their database they've put together for uh, local artists that to share uh, as a, an EPK um, with different venues. That seems to be taking off. We've had a lot of people mm-hmm. say they've they've gone on there. It was nice and easy for them yeah. to get. Listen uh, to CLE.com. Get yourself signed up on that database. No cost to you. Okay. Yeah. You're smooth today, Evan. Oh, thanks. You I get just that, rest, that rest like uh, did yeah, you Yeah, you know, maybe it did do anything, <laughs> you know. What is well, this I also rest took, you speak of? <laughs> <laughs> I also took a few days off drinking, and now this lead slingers bourbon is acting in, in my brain. Oh, yeah. all right. I think I'm going to do that next month. I am. I put on like 25 pounds since this podcast has started. Not I wasn't today's say one, anything. but no. <laughs> all, we, all the pictures that we crop when we post on Instagram <laughs> are cropped for a reason. Oh, believe me, because 2020, I, I can relate to this. I'm mm-hmm. sitting going like, I am still at the gym trying to get that, that weight off there. <laughs> yeah. I understand that. Yeah, mine's yeah. come from working in an office. I always worked outside, and I switched to doing office work now. And like our boss is very generous with like buying us lunch a couple times a week, and he's a mm-hmm. foodie, so it's like delicious food that comes yeah. in and now <laughs> i've got this. i understand <laughs> i've seen you worse yeah you see me worse yeah i don't think you have oh well maybe not. i think this is the this is my lowest point so far well you look so fine. far you look fine <laughs> you look fine you're moving to italy you'll be spending a lot of time outside. you need to get joe's glasses <laughs> <laughs> i do i've never had glasses i haven't taken an eye test in about 10 years yeah I knew it was a problem when I looked up and saw a bird. I'm like, oh, there's two birds flying up. I'm like, wait, that's one. It's like <laughs> <laughs> so was it the first time you wore them when you were actually on stage? Well, no, I, I, had, I well, first time I, should, I, I wore them like a, a couple days before because I literally, they came literally like three days before the show. Okay. And I, I'm, I, I went out for a drive with them. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great. I mean, mind you, I could see. It just was like, it just things at a distance. I'm real nearsighted. So it, it like a distance, things that kind of got doubled. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's not good. So when I started seeing actually what I was missing in reality, I was like, oh, I totally need to wear these for the show. So literally it was like three days. And if I'd had like a couple weeks, I would have ordered a pair of sunglass version of it. But I was like, let's just try this. And literally I got the cheapest pair that they, because I didn't know if this was like, if this place is going to work or not. So I got like, okay, with shipping, it was like $11.40 for this pair of glasses. And they're perfect. I was like, what the heck? I'm like... (laughs) But you no, know, is so literally like for the first big thing. Yes, that yeah. was the first night that I actually did that. <laughs> Julie, my wife, she uh, was nearsighted in one and farsighted in the other. Got LASIK for it. We actually found out because she was just walking in circles. Couldn't tell depth. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Nicely played, so yes. there you go. <laughs> Nice, Jim. Um, so did you get those made into sunglasses yet? Not yet. I, I I haven't sat down to do that. I've been like trying to play catch up on a lot of stuff, and so that's the next thing I want to do. But they have like what was so kind of neat that I'm not trying to be like a representative for Zenny, but it was what it was like. I'm looking through like going, oh, that would be a cool look, and that'd be a cool look, and that'd be. A... And so I I want to get though like a nice like pair of sunglasses from outside. I don't have to like I can see everything. But then I don't have like a regular pair of glasses yeah. on. Are they all something like twelve bucks a pair? Or yeah, they... they they start at like the cheapest pair is like six dollars and ninety five cents, wow. and they go up to forty five dollars, and then there's a bunch of like a add ons you can get that that increases your price. Okay. Right? but if you get like the bare bones minimum of each one, it's like they're really not that bad. That sounds wow. sounds great. Yeah, I was kind of like, I huh? Might, I might be seeing shit and not even realizing, like bad. <laughs> What, what was that? <laughs> All right, cut that. <laughs> Let's try again to make a good sentence. All right. <laughs> and action. <laughs> we never cut anything. No, that's fine. No, that's <laughs> all right. 
listening back to these podcasts, it's so funny. Like, because like being here and uh, uh, you know, we'll cut that too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll get no, it but it's, it's all authentic. It's all. It's all good. <laughs> that's yeah. That's what I like about it. it was just we we were gonna have like multiple cameras going and everything. That was our original intention. And now mm-hmm. I kind of like doing the. Like I do, oh, yeah, like doing right. a three mic drum oh, yeah. setup. Yeah, yeah, like, no, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Oh yeah, we had all these ideas for post production kind of stuff, but now it's just yeah. throw it on. It's it's a better message, I think. Oh, because <laughs> we're just talking yeah. and like want everyone to feel like you're right here with us. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. We get the Bob and Tom thing with the motorized cameras and stuff they have all around the studio and yeah. stuff. It gets, it gets a little crazy. Yeah. The, the drone buzzing yeah. right by you yeah. like the whole time. <laughs> be, just hovering like it's, it's the sky cam right here. I might do that for our next guest. I got a drone upstairs, and I'll just like pretend like it's a normal thing, and I'll have the drone buzzing by him. Oh, all right. Maybe we can get Russell Jones from Jones Jones Cleveland to help us out. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Why aren't you going to read about it? Yeah, was, Jones Jones <laughs> Cleveland. As for as much as you got marbles in your mouth for those other parts, these transitions to the, are to the ads are yeah, they're beautiful. I got a thing for ads, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Jones Jones CLE dot com commercial drone services focused on creative solutions. Our buddy Russell Jones runs this company, and he does drone lessons, repairs, sales lessons, just like Chuck Kaminsky with music. Yeah, he does a lot of the, the first-person view stuff that looks like a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, he was just doing something for a big bike race downtown. It looked That's really right, cool. following the motorcycles. And he's been getting involved with our um, big sports teams. You yeah, know, just, did the uh, NBA All-Star game. Mm-hmm, just did a yeah. little flyover of progressive fields and, like, through through the seats and oh, up awesome. on the lights. And he just did um, one he just posted today at uh, Wildwood Park in Menor. I used to maintain that park. I was like, I know oh, that yeah? building. <laughs> I haven't seen that. Yeah. That place, there was a dude that ran it named Lenny, and he was like the most meticulous person I've ever met in my life. I'll have to show you pictures later. Like He had lists of everything to do every day, including like folding his clothes and putting them on the bed for the next night. It was on his list every day, and he left his list in his car. I can, re- I can relate to this. <laughs> but he would have, I remember getting called because I had to go replace the hot water tank at that building and I'm like I'm like the thing looks fine like what's up he's like oh the warranty expires in two days so is it this little park that's like close to 20 kind of kind of um, um it's an old house um it used to be huge like rose gardens in the background okay, in the yeah. backyard so th- this is that's I just discovered this place from living in that it's it's this hidden gem with yeah. these really nice trails yeah and lots of Gardens. Lots of gardens. Uh, Menor used to be the rose capital of the world, really? apparently, I like in like the 1920s wow. or something. If you go oh. to the bank that's next to Arrowhead Music, or a former bank, I think they're closed now, but there's uh, like a plaque there that you know commemorates Menor being the rose capital of the world, and it was the Menor Rose Gardens right oh, there. Wow. Yeah, you got to learn about your stomping grounds there. That was a yeah, hundred years ago, man. <laughs> there was a, a movie recently, and I can't think of what it was. Uh, it was on again on Netflix, and it, it was it took place in Mentor, the first part. Oh, right? really? And Chardon. I was like going, what the heck? I, 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 I have to go back and look at my history. Wow. It was yeah. like in the past couple, like in the past six months, I saw a movie that had something with that, and I'm like, oh, that. <laughs> there was some indie movie people made. Like in the early 2000s, it was about Bigfoot, and they like filmed it in the marsh, and it was big oh, all over the headlands. <laughs> they were like way into it in the headlands about this Bigfoot movie. I've got a great Ohio uh, film for you. I, I, I discovered it while watching it. I, I love really stupid films. Like I have, I have uh, my one video uh, friend of mine got me hooked on to like watching just bizarre movies and stuff. And there's this movie called Thanks Killing. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Oh, yeah. That is this, the funniest. It's not a B horror movie. It's a no. C horror yeah. movie. Or an a e. D. <laughs> and, like, the, the, the puppet was handmade by the director, if I remember correctly. And it's clearly, it's a turkey head puppet. And you can clearly tell it was like. I think I've seen this. Yeah. yeah. And, and a group of us were watching, because I had this movie, and I, we were, it, was, it was my, it was back, back when I had uh, Joe Vitale Jr. Uh, just under that. And we were all kind of my one buddy's apartment. We're all watching this, and the one my one keyboard player at the time noticed. He goes, "Ohio license That's an Ohio plate. license Ohio plate. License we plate. did <laughs> this, and it's it's yeah, it was it's an Ohio made film. And I went, "Oh, this is just too good." But yeah, the the um, 
killer turkey. It comes back every like three hundred years on yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's just and, and then it like becomes then it goes it takes this weird turn. And he becomes like radioactive, and so then he's like he's like this re- like glowing green turkey, and he's running around. It's just this is excellent. It, yeah, it was most excellent. Yeah, yeah. it sounds like- now, get, every year because I I make my wife watch this every year on Thanksgiving. So it's, I'm down with that. That sounds like a fantastic tradition. I remember tradition. watching. I watched, uh, Rihanna watched that. She laughed the whole time. <laughs> there's another one watch called that the, one again. There's another one called the Ginger Dead Man. Um, <laughs> oh, I've I've seen a preview for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah the best one. It's it's got um, Gary Busey is the voice of the Ginger. I'm like you. I'm like oh, you needed work, didn't you? I was like, <laughs> it's it's um, it, it's this bizarre film. It, it's just I I tried. I seek out these weird movies. There's, and I like I just like stupid like horror dumb movies like this that are just like humorous and they're yeah. in the sense like there's a Santa Slay is another one okay and it's Santa running around like being like murderous around the stage. it's like it's just weird I remember weird stuff. Silent Night Deadly Night they had a whole series of those <laughs> I just remember they used to play it on Cinemax and I was little and there was boobs in it so I was like I was all over it Skinemax yeah. but yeah like, so like they were what's mad that, what's that called again it was uh, Silent <laughs> Night Deadly Night um and uh, I, there was a one that like impaled this girl on a deer. <laughs> like oh, the man. antlers came through the boobs. <laughs> the Ow, one, that, that that's the uh, that's the one part I remember about that movie because I was you know like probably like ten oh. something like that. See, I start. I start. Like, my, see, when I was growing up, my dad would have like my mom and dad like they love like all fifties and sixties B films. So I okay. like watch all the monster films from back then. Like you have you have, you have, you go the, the uh, you have Godzilla, but then you have like. Oh, I'm just trying to think of the other ones. But I, I, I loved all those movies in the 50s, 60s, and early 70s. And so then when my one partner started showing me, like, he goes, you need to check this out. And he goes, go watch this movie. And I watched it. I'm the whole time, like, going, oh, this is just brilliant. <laughs> and I, so I, I, I seek out now movies like that. The Ginger Dead Man. Yeah, it's just, it's just, oh, my gosh. It just gets it gets crazy. I always saw those, but with the commentary over them from uh, Mystery Science oh, yes. Theater. Oh, yes. <laughs> my absolute favorite TV show of all time. And then yeah. they became um, the film crew, and now they're called Rift Tracks. It's the same guys. Okay. It's, and it's, it's the later uh, Mystery Science Theater guys. So you have, um, uh, let's see. I, they update the robots. No, no, actually, there's no robots. It's, all it is, you just see that you hear the voices. Just, there's no robots in the corner. Okay. Although, okay. when they brought back Mystery Science Theater on Netflix... Um, if you watch, I think it's episode six or seven, they give like all the people who donated to bring it back. And my name's like this wee little name in there because like, I had to donate to get in this to get that show. I was so depressed when that show went off the air. Yeah. That was still this day I watched those like it's a couple like I used to watch it every single day. And now it's like every every so often I'll watch it, but I still it's my still favorite show of all time. I got to get back into that. Like that's just a mm. feel good show. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Season I think it's seven is the really good one. See, see, uh, seven and eight I think are the two really really good ones. It has the de- giant deadly mantis, and then they've uh, there's uh, the thing that couldn't die. There's a whole bunch of wonderful uh, movies in that. We always spend about twenty minutes on movies and on this podcast. That's all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's great stuff though. I mm-hmm. like it jogs memories, man. I haven't watched that show in forever, and it's just great. It's awesome. It's like they're sitting there going like, "Oh, that's just fantastic." <laughs> but yeah, check out Rift Tracks. It's 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 just like it. Okay. It's, yeah, it's the same guys. It's the exact same guys. Kevin Murphy, all you know, all of them. Um, it's it's from the from about ninety five ninety six when Joel left, and I I can't think of. Um, Oh, and Mike came in, in that sense. It's like that group on. Okay. That, so, yeah, check that out. It's, it's cool. Absolutely. Awesome. We're going back to music? We're yeah, gonna, sure. We're going yeah, to we should, right? have to get back to I, music. I can totally go off on that tangent, though. Yeah, That's a we second, all can. Lots, second of, lots to get to cram in in this Kaya last 20, Vision. minutes. As you, t- as you can tell, I'm chatty. So. Oh, that's that's yeah. a good spot to yeah. be. <laughs> cool. Would you mind being a little more chatty for sure, us? Sure, absolutely. Cool. All right. I'm, well, um, I'm really interested in... Um, growing up with uh, a with a father in big touring bands mm-hmm. and uh, how that had an effect on you musically and maybe people you got to meet good stories and oh, uh, sure. good advice and sure absolutely so you know from from the time I was born my dad right around the time I was born my dad was in the Eagles so it, it, I grew up kind of around it from the very you know from right from the get go and 
for me, it was people like, well, how is that, you know, with your dad being gone for like, you know, six weeks at a time? I'm like, well, it's just like every other dad going to the office. It's just he goes to the office for like six weeks. It's, you know, he comes back. And I started going out on the road when I was about like, I'd go to like single shows here and there when I was younger. And then about. Where'd you guys, um, where'd you grow up at? I grew up in uh, Canton, Ohio. Okay. And that's so. Um, when I started going on tour, like we go out for like a couple of weeks at a time with my dad. It was I was, it was around 1987, which is totally aging me right now. And uh, I was 10 years old at the time, and it was it was really a unique experience. I was with Crosby, Stills and Nash at, at that point, and and I'd seen my dad play with Walsh, you know, all before that too, and that. But it, it was a really unique experience growing up around that. And my and my and I come from a um, I'm a Christian. I come from a you know very. Uh, really nice, a wonderful family in that sense. And so I was always told like, okay, here's what you don't want to do while growing up. So like, if you see people doing drugs, you don't want to do this. And you, you see some bizarre stuff out on, on the road in that sense. But from early on, I was always like, okay, here's what not to do. <laughs> but um, growing up, what actually changed my entire life was in, in same tour in 1987. Um, my, they, my dad was with CSN. They were playing at Blossom Music Center. And they asked if I wanted to come out and play tambourine on Teacher Children. And it was a sold out crowd that night. It was about 19,000 people. And so I walk out and I wasn't even like mic'd up, but I was terrified I was going to screw the band up at that point. And I started playing, the crowd went nuts and stuff like that. And at that moment, I decided I wanted to do that for my for my career. And at that same time, I was like, wanting, like most kids, I was wanting to be an astronaut at that point. And then I realized this was way more fun. <laughs> so, so um, so anyway, so I started kind of, you know, learning. I started taking drum lessons when I was around 12 or 13. My dad actually didn't give me drum lessons because we had that, we didn't want to have that father-son conflict potential. So he actually had me take lessons from someone that he gave lessons to and that, so he knew it would be a, a good a teacher. So I, I did that. But then like through the 90s, we'd go out on the road. I absolutely loved it. It was, I, it was just my favorite time being was being out on the road and, and that. And uh, which led into then playing with some of these groups. So, like, I had grown up with them from the time I was, like, 10 to where I was, like, playing with Crosby, Stills, and Nash, then actually on tour. So it was it was a very interesting changeover. And people have always asked, like, well, what's it like, you know, to, you know, to be on the road with these stars? I'm like, it really never phased me. I, I was always, like, they're just... Like your your uncles essentially, just they just happen to have like millions of people wanting to see them. So for me, it was it was just like a big family on the road. Um, the one time though, I will say I, I got starstruck, and, it, and this is only a couple years ago. Um, my dad was in the film Ricky and the Flash. Uh, he's the, the drummer in that with Meryl Streep, Kevin Clannett, and so I had just gotten married. Uh, my wedding anniversary is coming up on the twenty seventh of September, and this is back in twenty fourteen, and. We got back like two days from our honeymoon, and my dad goes, "Do you want to fly out to New York and be on set?" In that sense, I'm like, "Yes." And so, <laughs> I I felt bad. I literally just got back. And I'm, like, I'm like, "Honey, I'm gonna go to New York for a couple of days." And that, so I flew out to New York, and I was on, you know, they're on the set, kind of behind the scenes and stuff like that. And Meryl Streep was coming off the stage. I put my arm up to help her off the stage, and she she kind of walked down with me, and she kissed me on the cheek. And I'm going, in my oh. head, I went, Meryl Streep just kissed my cheek and I'm like I don't get like gushy in the sense of like when it comes to like I never get fa like starstruck it's the first time I was like this is acting royalty that just like it was she was unbelievably nice to talk to she was really wonderful but it was like that's the one time there but growing up like I've gotten to meet uh obviously Joe Walsh and that um I'm trying to think, obviously Crosby Stills and Nash those guys Neil Young uh Peter Frampton um Trying to think, it just, just kind of merges all together after a while. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Tom Petty. Um, I just, I'm trying to filter back through everything that I've got. Then there's some. Uh, there's this funny thing is I've actually met some people like Alan Thicke. We were at the uh, the '97 uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremonies, and like, uh, uh, there's just people all around us. So I just like. I'm pretty bold in that, so I just walk right up to people and I'm like, "Hey, can I have, <laughs> can I have your autograph?" So, it, like, um, it, it was just interesting you, the people you kind of run into. Uh, Brian Wilson uh, from the Beach Boys. Uh, it, it's it's very it was very surreal, and I always you know the one thing my my family always taught me is always be humble. So I've never tried to let this ever you know like oh, I'm, I'm better than you. nothing like that. I've always tried to uh, take this as you know is is. is uh, God's blessing in that sense to be Privilege. able to yeah. do this. And it's it's one of those things where I've always tried to stay humble and try to stay very um, 
uh, you know, knowing that this is a is an actual job. It's a lot of fun, but it's it's a job too, and, and that's how I've always approached this. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that, that all makes sense. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it does. Absolutely. It does. Yeah. Yeah, uh, when we appreciate you coming on this podcast, I was just Absolutely. taking a shot in the dark when I reached oh, no, out. To you. I was. Like, I was, ex- I was think we can get this guy. Like, Absolutely, <laughs> I'm glad we were able to work. I know we went through a couple of months of trying to schedule. I'm glad we were able to make this all mm-hmm. work on that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've been love, loving your uh, CD there. Oh, well, thank you, been, thank you. I got oh, yeah. it on Apple mm-hmm. Music. It's probably still on there right now. I was listening to it in the car on the way. You yeah, know, it reminds me of like early Shine Down. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that's that's that, it's one of the groups actually. That's like I try to. I, I you'll hear a mixture of like there's some Nine Inch Nail influence on there. There's uh, Shine Down. Uh, you know, a lot of alternative groups, Stone Temple Pilots. You'll hear a lot of that yeah. kind of stuff through there. Um, I had a lot of fun putting this record together. It was I started it. The first song is Don't Let Go. That was the the very first song. I thought, well, I'll start. I'll put a single out. And that kind of led into the rest of the record. And I started that in like 2017, released it in 2018. It just kind of like worked on here and there while I was doing other kind of projects. And then when the pandemic hit, I literally had nothing to do for like for a year. So I, I'm like, okay, there's no shows. I'm like, I have time to myself now. So I sat down and over about a, um, about a I'd say like six months, uh, really just hammered at this and uh, got it, you know, released in um, spring of 2021. But sat down and really just dove in and really had a blast recording this record. It's it's the the most fun I think I've had working on a record was on this one just because it's like literally you're like, well, let's try this. You know, it's, yeah. and it was just me in my basement just working for like literally all day for months at a time and stuff like that. But it, it was one of those things where having that time, you know, despite all the, you know, we uncertainness of the time, I felt like, okay, you've got this moment here to work on this. So let's do this. So really just kind of dove in and learned a bunch of stuff. I had like, there was just things I would do out of like just habit that I'm like of, of recording that like I developed a whole bunch of new kind of like tricks and stuff with recording stuff just because I never had an opportunity to try anything else. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was a really unique experience at the time. And then from there, I'm in the process right now of working on a acoustic record because I thought I like to, I like to re- I, I reference Nine Inch Nails a lot because I, I look at the way they approach music in that sense of it's completely like off the wall in some ways. And one thing Reznor said one time was he goes, he likes to be uncomfortable. And I sat there and I'm like, I like that concept because it makes you think differently. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, right after I got done and released this, I started working on an acoustic record. I'm like, all right, how do we make a heavy rock album acoustic work? And that says, without going with it full power guitars and real bombastic, I was like, how do we make this cool like that? So I went like, okay, we make it eerie sounding. So I have stuff that's like out of tune on purpose that works with each other. and that's okay. something. So it's things like that that that's come together. The, the, the uh, single for that that just came out is called Blind. It had a lot of fun putting that out. And we just actually debuted that up at, at uh, Rock the Lock in, in Akron. And then the album itself is called Unsympathetic Vibrations in that sense. So that's hopefully going to be coming out within the last part of this year and that it's just been working out for about a year and a half now so i'm like we should probably get that done i want to get back to writing an electric record <laughs> doing everything out of tune a little bit is that a lot of trial and error to get it where it's it the is. wrong the right way well i should say like i should say it like this it's the guitars are in tune okay the i what i do is i massively detune um uh piano so you'll take it like it's like if you have a piano that's been sitting in like a room for like 20 years, it's never been tuned, yeah. but it still kind of works. It gives it this kind of uh, edge to it that yeah, when you're playing yeah. stuff. So it, you you have a um, you have the regular melody you're maybe playing on it, but then it's it gives it this other character about it. Yeah. So I try to do stuff like that. I try to use all symphonic anything that's. Uh, you know, instrumentation like, you know, cellos and stuff like that to give it uh, just a whole different vibe in that sense. So it, it's working. It's just, it was a it was tr- a lot of trial and error to get, that's the reason yeah. why it's taken this long because I'm going, all right, how do we make this sound like, how do we make a sequencer out of like a xylophone? And so it's like, it's things <laughs> like that you have to start, and you're like, well, we'll try this. And I don't like that. We'll try this. And, and so it, it's coming out really better than I hoped, but it was one of those situations where literally I'm like, I, I'm like once I got deep into it, I'm like, well, I gotta finish it now. <laughs> so it's like, but it, it's it's actually one of my favorite albums I've worked on because of having to think differently. And yeah. Another one I wanna do is is called Ravenwood Raw. And what it would be is um, 
I want to use instruments either I built or stuff that's like completely wrong way of recording to try to make stuff kind of unique. Because you can get into a rut really easily if you're just like, okay, we're gonna do this. Okay, okay the chorus is coming out with this. I try to like invert stuff constantly. Like let's make the chorus quieter and the, the actual verses loud. So it's, it's things like you try to rethink what you've already learned, if that makes sense. Yeah, you build instruments? I, I do, I, okay. I like, I started uh, back in 20, I think it was 2017, I started seeing a lot of like cigar box guitars kind yeah. of coming on the market. And, and people just kind of randomly build them. And I, I have this sick obsession with Pinterest when it comes to like uh, <laughs> of, of stuff you can build. I, I, I got the moniker a few years ago as a mad scientist because a lot of the lighting you see in our show, I actually hand build. Okay. And so I got into, I like, well, let's see if I could build one of these things. So I started building a, this cigar box guitar. It took me like all summer because I, I wanted to make it perfect. And it's, it's a lot of fun to do that sort of stuff. And so did that and, and uh, trying to do some more of that kind of stuff now. But I, I, I'm trying to do some like, it's called a, I think it's called a symbolum. Is another thing you use like soup cans and like actual guitar strings across and you can play them oh. like, a, like a dulcimer kind of. Wow. wow. So I, again, <laughs> I like to give stuff kind of a weird sound that you wouldn't normally necessarily hear on a regular set of instruments is, yeah. is my kind of approach to stuff. It's like I look at it and go, all right, how do we make this wrong? <laughs> it's like, it was even the same on this record, like with the drums, I almost never use hi-hat. It's like, I'll use a shaker or a tambourine for that beat. Yeah. And I have the drummer just literally playing toms and kick and snare, but like almost like symphonically playing versus how you would normally approach a drum kit. Or this acoustic album you're doing right now, you mean? Yeah. It's, 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 it's been interesting. It's, it's, it's a lot of, um, like, like we were saying, a lot of trial and error, a lot of experimentation with it. But it's a lot of fun, though, too. That's the thing that's, yeah. that's been great about it. Definitely. It sounds like it would take you out of your comfort zone. It does. And like, I just even approaching how to, like, mix is a whole other thing. Like, okay, what do we want to have this? What's going to... My dad always taught me what drives the song in that sense. Is it, like, the sequencer that's driving a song? Is it a drum kit? Like, whatever it is, that's your focus. And then everything else after that, you say, like, do I need this or do I not? Yeah. And so I'll, I'll fill in like a song with a ton of tracks and I'll like, all right, I'll cut this, cut this, cut this, cut this. And so then you you prune it down to what makes the song perfect. So that's kind of the approach with this. It's like, all right, we have the focus of this acoustic guitar here, but let's, let's add a drum kit in, but let's mess it up like a lot. So like I was saying, like you'd use like one drum mic yeah. on something and then you let that, you filter that somehow that gives it a whole different characteristic. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Nice. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> now, I enjoy your 15 second uh, oh. <laughs> pieces of advice on your YouTube channel. Thank your you. Shorts. Thank you. Yeah, I, I started that. Uh, it was in uh, around January of 2021. I wanted to start doing something that would kind of give back to musicians in that sense and our people that are learning to do this. Because after so many years of, of doing this, I've picked up a lot of tips and tricks and stuff. And I wanted to start kind of sharing that with people. So at the time, uh, because TikTok back then was only 15 second, like ma 15 to 30 seconds, I think was the maximum length. And I got this, like, I got sucked into TikTok really <laughs> fast in that sense. And it was fun. So I thought, okay, I'm going to start doing this thing. So that's why it's 15 second mixing tips because yeah. it's li now it's like you can do like 10 minutes on there. I'm like, it's not the mm -hmm. same. But at the time, I'm like, okay, we have this much time. What can we do in 15 seconds? I think I spend more saying the name of what it is than actually of the tip. But it, it had a lot of um, really unique uh, tips. I can give it a quick, you know, quick way to say like, all right, you should like if you're doing original music, join BMI and submit your set list to uh, BMI Live. And you get paid then when you submit your set list in for each show. Yeah. And you get like, you know, anywhere from like 50 cents to a dollar per gig, depending on the size of the, the audience. But it's it's little fun things like that that people just don't you know, never heard because there's no never been someone to like tell them oh yeah you need to join Harry Fox you need to join BMI you need to definitely not only copyright stuff but maybe trademark trademark the name of your band Th things like that. I'm gonna play one for our listeners right now that I, I like to. Learn. Fifteen second mixing tips. If you're listening back to a track and it seems like it's lacking in bass, it could be your room acoustics. Bass waves are about five feet long, so you may need to step back from the monitors a little bit to hear the full bass wave. Try standing back about ten to fifteen feet and see what your mix sounds like there. 15 second mixing there it is. Yeah. that's a perfect one I, like, yeah. I was unaware of that and I bought some subwoofers actually I picked them up for uh, our friend Dennis He's. I, I saw him on Craigslist he's like yeah can you go get those for me so I went and got them I brought them here and I was testing them out I'm like 
these things suck. You know, I was blasting them in the basement. Right. I go upstairs and like the whole house was oh, like, yeah. about to rock mm-hmm. off the foundation. <laughs> oh yeah, it, and that's the thing. They, they like they always say like when you're like when setting up a mixing environment too. They say to use the one third rule, and what that means is you set your your monitors could be like against the wall, but your listening point is a third of the way back into the room. Now, unfortunately, in my room, I can't do that. But it's like it's it's little things like that that all of a sudden you're like, oh. It's like, this sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny, I have a, a hilarious Craigslist a music story. Uh, I, was in, I was over at, uh, at Malone University for a while, and so I was there for like about a year. And I was kind of filling in some, uh, I was there for like in their recording program, I was kind of filling in some gaps in my knowledge. I just wanted like, okay, I understand this, but I want to know why this does this. Yeah. And so they, there was a guy in our class um, who goes, hey, somebody just put up a, a, a mini Moog on, on Craigslist for $25. <laughs> and I literally grabbed my phone and I'm like, I'm like, I'm sitting there, I wrote the thing. I went, if you still have this, I will drive down right now and give you money in your hand. And then somebody had already grabbed it. Yeah. They said, it might be a good beginner keyboard. I'm like, it's an original model. D. <laughs> Things worth like $6,000. And I'm like, I'll be down right now. And then they, they already yeah. sold it. I was like so mad. Yeah. <laughs> I was a Craigslist flipper for about a year. Oh, gotcha. And, uh, oh, yeah, there was some stuff that was just ridiculous. Like I bought a beautiful uh, sonar kit. That oh, was, nice. Uh, the rosewood yeah. inside and out. Ooh, nice, um, nice. With original stands and symbols, six piece kit, uh, 200 bucks. And then I got there and, you know, like it had original cases for everything. Everything was mint. And the guy's like, hey, I'm moving to South Carolina tomorrow. I got a whole nother room of drum stuff if you're interested. I had to do like three trips up the stairs with so many symbols. I couldn't, they were so heavy, I couldn't carry them. A uh, Roland kit. Oh, um, man. A Pearl Session, like, maple kit with stands and more symbols and cases. I got out of there with, like, I had spent, like, 650 bucks and had a mini, it was as much as for, I could pile into this. Yeah, was like, worth yeah, the yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah, the exactly. snare drum was, like, two grand. <laughs> yeah, yeah serious. Oh, my gosh. And, see, I love those kind of, those things like that. Yeah. When I was in high school, my dad and I, there was a, the, there was a thing before eBay called the Mini Merchant. And it was basically, I think every town kind of had a thing a version of it. And you'd put like a listing in there for stuff you had to sell. This guy had like an old B3 or something like that at the time. But then he had three Echoplexes. And they were solid state. They weren't tube ones, but they were still Echoplexes. Yeah, the UP3s. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. And, and, and so I wanted to buy all three of them because I knew what these, and my dad's like, oh, you don't want these things. Like He was like, and then he tells the person, oh, you can get, way, they want like $25 a piece. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you can get way more for that. I'm like, shut Damn. up. I'm Damn. like, I'm like <laughs> I wanted to get, I, I, but I missed out on that one. But it's, I love when you find those kind of like, yeah. gems like that. As, as I would well. always do something that I kind of learned from Chuck Kaminsky where I would be like, listen, if you sell this yourself online, you'll be able to get more than I'm offering you right now. Right. But it's going to be a pain in the ass, especially like with amps. It's like, Ugh. it's going to be a nightmare trying to ship this thing. I understand yeah, that feeling. Like. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Before you leave, we should do an episode just about your Craigslist days. Yeah. I should, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll bring up a. I actually just threw out a notebook I had. I, I might have saved it. I had a notebook of everything that I bought and what I bought it for and what I sold it for. And I was going back through it when we were like cleaning out things for the move. <laughs> I was like, holy cow. All right, here's what you do. You make it the price is right. And so you bring up the name of the item. Yeah. And you then you, have and, pictures and you ask, and everything. Like, yeah, and then you get, wait, what, what, what's the price of this? And then you have like, da, 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 da. And then, but uh, then you have have them guess the actual price of the item yeah. or how much Retail you value for. Yeah. is. <laughs> but they don't get to take it home. Bum, bum, uh, right. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like that. All right. Like that. Yeah, feature on our YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. Take this up a notch. Yeah, we could do that for sure. Yeah. I had some, it was it was really cool to be able to get gear that I couldn't really afford. I couldn't right, afford right. to keep it, but I could play it for a little bit, and that was a yeah. lot of fun. That was a lot of fun to do. That is cool. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing that's another reason why I build a lot of stuff is I have this weird obsession with what are called Portman lights, and they're these hexagon shaped halogen lights. And so I've sat and looked at them. They're like really stupidly expensive for like like for one of these arrays. They're like. A few grand for this thing. And it's like this is like six halogen light bulbs in, in a hexagon. <laughs> and I'm looking at it going, I can build that. So I went online. I found like all these like, I, and I learned how to build them since then. You can I learned how to build hexagons. So I'm like, I'm gonna build my own. So I, I got like LED cob strips and stuff. And I have everything wired into DMX, so you can actually like uh, control it now yeah. with our system. And so I was like, so that's that we just did that actually at our show, and it worked out good. But I know what you mean though. It's like if there's gears, like if you don't, if you can't afford like. 
I'll just build this. Be- <laughs> when I built my first amp, I went and played a blues breaker. And, oh, nice. Uh, Sam nice. Ash, and I was like, that's a great sounding amp. I can't afford that. <laughs> so, yeah, I went on uh, it's the Weber amp kits. Mm-hmm. I built one of those for my first one because it was it was only like 400 bucks at the time to, to get a kit. And I was like, all right, I'm going to buy the $400 model, see if I can get it to work. And if I can, I'll, you know, like spend more and build something nicer. So, yeah, I built a couple amps. And, that's awesome. But, yeah, it was all Everything I think a lot of my music stuff is just based on like I wanted to do something, but I couldn't afford something. So, oh, like, I understand you know, this. Like, <laughs> I, know, I know that. I, well, yeah. it's fun that way because then you're able to like you can make exact. Especially the more you get into it, you, I love doing di- DIY stuff. I love doing that. And the more you you can sit there and make stuff, then exactly the way you want it to mm-hmm. be. Then too. Now it's also nice just to be like, oh, I can afford this. I'll just buy this guitar. You know. But it, yeah. <laughs> sometimes that's not always the case, and it's like, well, like, like I'm like, well. Yeah, I could buy that. Or, <laughs> so I, I understand that premise a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of fun though, being able to build the stuff, and it helps you out when the stuff breaks down. Oh, you know, you, you know it. You're the one who knows it. what could possibly yeah. be the problem. Yeah. You are the instruction manual. <laughs> yeah. When Absolutely. we first started playing, I was doing. I was. Um, I got into lasers uh, very early on, and. Um, I so I would I build these lasers for our show and at the time I used uh, it's called Lightorama it was a, a Christmas tree software okay because yeah. I'm like how do we program this thing to work and it, I didn't have DMX or anything like that that we could use easily back then so I went well this is cheap or right? so I you get the software it runs off a laptop so you can you could design all that your effects and stuff like that so we would have all this synced up kind of stuff to do that but it was uh, it was it was really neat to be able to build those lasers since then I've got I wanted brighter lasers and so I have to I carry now a federal variance license. To <laughs> to, to, to use these high power lasers and stuff, and I'm, but I'm like, but the problem is we haven't had all of our shows have been outdoors re- lately, uh, and, and we're usually it's in the day. So I'm like, <coughs> what do we do? <laughs> I need my freaking lasers. I miss them. <laughs> it's like I'm like I need fog, and then I need those. Yeah. <laughs> Well, September, October outside shows will be darker by true. like six or seven this time. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah. Lasers bouncing off those leaves falling. Yeah, yeah that'd be really cool. <laughs> Real or igniting thing. them, depending on what, you're <laughs> yeah. what kind of laser. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was at a show. Tom Petty used lasers at one point. This is back in like 2010, and it was daylight, sunny, bright, beautiful out. You could see these things in daylight. They were so bright, and I'm going, "How many watts are those things?" It's because they come in like in, in you, the, like the pen ones use are five milliwatts. Yeah, these things were like. 40 watt in that sense and you could see the beam clearly in the, in the in daylight it was like six o'clock at night I'm like, <laughs> and it wasn't cutting through anything which amazed me but i was like oh that is just cool so yeah. I, I i stayed for that whole show just to watch these things at the end of the night and stuff like that <laughs> that's cool cool well joe it was real nice to have you here today. thank you it was a pleasure thank you guys so much i had a wonderful time you're welcome yeah. we got to give one more um shout out before we wrap up who we got? Jason, who we got? Myers. Oh, jason, yeah, jason Patrick myers jason myers is that who you're talking about no i'm talking about <laughs> jason myers the um executive director of roots of american music yeah yeah same the dude but guy jason patrick us. myers is his alter ego oh yeah. oh that what he plays aware. music under yeah. i should have been aware <laughs> our camera just shut off I did not plug the damn thing in. I have an extra battery. We will hit pause because we actually were pausing. I just did so. You keep talking about the audio. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, maybe we can actually cut that dead air right there, then. Yeah, we will make a cut. All right. <laughs> just, or just put in the, just insert a word, awkward silence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did this once before where I forgot to plug it in and I inserted uh, Chuck fucked up here. <laughs> uh, Jason Myers is uh, um, who we just had in a couple weeks ago, but this is actually for Roots of American Music, the nonprofit that is helping get music into schools that need it. So check out Roots of American Music. Uh, Google search that, or you can go to rootsofamericanmusic.org to see what they're involved with. And if you would like to make a donation, they gladly accept those. I don't know well. why that camera randomly shut off. It was just oh, we're no, back. No fault of my <laughs> own. We're back. For sure, for sure. I'm glad it dings when it does that. Brought to you by Duracell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it was right at the end. So we, I, I know. Like that, was, uh, <laughs> that works. Uh, that works. That yeah. Works. Nobody's even listening anymore. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, we got our movie recommendation of the week. We did. We got that, that in early. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, we usually ask at the end. Supposed so. to be watching Mystery Science Theater. That's right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll be watching that tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so go check out the Woodstock 99 documentary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Check out Joe Vitale Jr.'s YouTube channel. He's got some great music videos. Really good production. Oh, thank you. Those. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. And Ravenwood. Yep. Yeah, Ravenwood. Uh, tell us about some upcoming shows. Well, actually, okay, so right now uh, we're in, uh, we just played up at Lock 3, and then what we're doing right now is I'm, we're kind of in a downtime period right now because I'm trying to finish up this record, so I, I decided to move all my attention and focus to that. That being said, um, I'm in booking mode though also, so I got, because I mm -hmm. multiple hats, and so I, I'm working on stuff for later in in this year and into 2023 in that sense. We usually, usually about mid fall, we usually start announcing some new stuff, but right about now as I'm trying to get some stuff finished up, so I decided to take a step back from uh, playing out live uh, for, for us, just for like a couple of, like a month or so, and then uh, we've also got that uh, Vinyl Machine show coming up, so I'm kind of like, my focus is also like, Finishing record and getting that, that show uh, together and that, because that's going to be a, a fun night. It's going to be a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Do right. you have a Ravenwood website? Yes, it's uh, ravenwoodrocks.com. Okay. And then if you go to also joevitalejr.com, that's, uh, that's, that's my personal site in that sense, and then Ravenwood Rocks is the band site. All right, and one more time on that um, Vinyl Machine show. Yeah, oh, yeah, the Vinyl Machine show, is, it's going to be on uh, Wednesday, October 19th, uh, 2022, at the Night Stage in Akron, Ohio. It's right next door to the Akron Civic Theater. All right. We're looking forward to that. Yeah, that sounds killer. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks again, Joe Vitale Thank Jr. You. All right. For Cuyahoga Sound Podcast, I'm Evan Stone. I'm Chuck Schilling. Peace. Peace.